Yeah, g'day, I'm Clay Wilcock. I'm the president of the EV Challenge powered by Synergy. I'm here both in the role as the president of the club and as a teacher who uh, has my kids uh, design and build these amazing little electric vehicles. We're here at the 2017 EV Challenge powered by Synergy. I hope you enjoy it. The day really started for me, well, obviously a long time ago, and we were designing and building these cars at school. Uh, at the same time as well, uh, myself and my wife are the president and event secretary of this, so you know, for us it was a case of right back at the beginning of the year, and it's gone on for a few years, rewriting the rules, making sure everyone was communicated with to make sure they knew you know, on Facebook, uh, on our website, to make sure that they were understanding when the comp was on, what would be required. So this last week has had a huge amount of logistical things. A few schools have pulled out. You know, we originally had 38 entries. I think we've got 30 here today. Um, so it was dealing with a few people there. A few technical questions through the week as well. And then last night it was really a case of me throwing all the cars on the trailer and um, helping Trish out get all the paperwork together because obviously being involved with CAMS is a huge administrative burden. Otherwise we wouldn't have insurance, we couldn't run the event. So a lot of paperwork got done last night. This morning it was up at about half past five, uh, finishing off that paperwork, uh, making sure the car was loaded with all the bits and pieces. Uh, had a couple of kids from my school rock up at my place at nine in the morning, and then we all shot off um, in my car to get here, and we got here about 11. See the tracks out of the Hurricane Go-Kart Club in Mundawi. Uh, they've been absolutely sensational. They actually don't let any other organisation use their facility, which they wholly own themselves. Uh, no cart hire business, there have been a few other groups that have wanted to use it for various events. We're the only ones they let use it. So it is a bit of a hike for some teams, like we come from Secret Harbour, so from Secret Harbour to Wandowie, it's about an hour and a half, two hour trip. Um, but yeah, really fantastic and a beautiful night, so we're really happy with that. I actually wear two hats. I'm the scrutineer, but I'm also part of the Guildford Grammar School team. Scrutineering is purely and simply checking that the students have followed the engineering guidelines for this event. So it's a set of specifications. We're talking engineering must meet the specification. The actual build quality of the vehicles has been very good compared to some of the previous years. I think that's been borne out in the way that we've seen the performance of the vehicles around the track in the, uh, this, this last uh, event that we had. Uh, there has been very little way of breaking down, which has been really very good. We're now going to start the B class, which is the bigger field. Again, the build quality is very good. I expect to see a very competitive field. I don't know who's won. Yep. I would suggest that uh, car 44 has won, but I haven't heard the, the result. Clay Woolcock's team from Comet Bay, his personal car probably ran the best. Um, the other Comet Bay vehicle also ran very well, but they had a slight problem at the very end. 
but that was also a very, very good performer. Same sort of style as the um, Car 44. So our battery ended up dying after about 50 minutes. Um, with us leading, I think we had about a two lap lead over the other cars, but I think we just went out a bit too hard. We're pretty excited that we're out in front early and then yeah, the battery just died all of a sudden. We're pretty disappointed. Next year, pass on some good knowledge of, to the younger boys just, just to take it easy in the start of the race. Probably use a different kind of motor. A motor with gears, more efficient, but yeah, make it light as you can. The apprentices from our Muja Power Station were involved in the previous race. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do too well this year. They did really well in the last couple of years, but had um, a few mechanical issues this time. Um, but it was just a great experience for everyone. Learned a lot. We ended up with the Class C race that happened earlier, all three of us. So last year's winner who finished second, our old farts car that won it, and uh, the former Melville student who built the red wooden car, we all finished on the same number of laps. We did 46. The winner last year either did 37 or 38. So there was a really big jump. Um, there might be a couple of reasons why that's the case, but I think those cars were all pretty aerodynamic. Uh, they turned really, really well, so they to carry speed through corners and just had efficient motors. So as electric car technology gets better, obviously the EV technology gets better as well. Synergy is sponsoring the event because we love electric vehicles. They're definitely the way of the future. And um, this event enables um, our future, the young people of Western Australia, to learn more about electric vehicles. It's really important to support the electric vehicle industry. Um, as you can tell, I'm standing right next to a racetrack and yet you can still hear me talk because they're so much quieter than the internal combustion engines. They're also way better for the environment and better for energy security. So um, we love electric vehicles. We think they're the way of the future. Electric vehicles really are the future. You can actually see that in news, around the world where major car manufacturers are starting to phase out diesel and petrol vehicles in favour of electric. Electric vehicles are quiet, are reliable, have less servicing costs and no pollution. So they are the way of the future. So to encourage students at this level of high school, year 10s, 11s and 12s, into this Future technology, I think, is the best thing that we can possibly do. Well, there's been a big push over the last five to ten years for things called STEM education, so science, technology, engineering, maths. It was a big push in Western countries to kind of offset the fact that we were losing manufacturing to countries that had lower labour costs. We needed to be smarter. You know, we needed to develop apps and do coding and all sorts of science and engineering. Electric vehicles are a classic example of that and you know, we've been going for 17 years so before the STEM idea in education was trendy we were doing this for the whole idea of having an engineering education competition. There's a bit of a pathway as well, we've had a partner in Edith Cowan University for a few years who have a motorsport engineering course so if you kind of light that bug with some kids and often it's kids who aren't really academic, they love doing things with their hands, if you can say well look you can put the two together there is a pathway for these kids to go on. So it's, it's definitely uh, fun. I've been involved with it for 17 years and I wouldn't have been if it bored me or was really was not valuable. 
and have developed some great relationships with kids along the way and have seen them succeed really well. So that's something that I certainly like. But yeah, if a school's looking at doing it, I couldn't recommend it more. I think it definitely comes from a teacher at the school. You know, we've had lots of experiences where schools have been involved for a long time with the EV. A certain teacher moves and it kind of falls away. So we really do need a very engaged teacher to be able to drive the kids. But if you're enthusiastic about it as a teacher, the kids get enthusiastic about it as well. The significance for me and my experiences in education is the ability to encourage students in STEM, in engineering. Starting from a blank sheet of paper, designing a car, building a car, so learning all the skills in the fabrication of the vehicle, the design of the vehicle using CAD programs and, and so forth, getting the vehicle together, and actually seeing something that is real tangible, touchable, and they can get out there and see their work doing something. It's a very good practical engineering experience for the students. The race that's behind us is for Class B. Now Class B has been for teams uh, involving high school kids up to the end of Year 12. So it's got the bigger battery, the 36 volt 16 hour battery, um, and traditionally this has been the fastest category. A-Class is the junior class, so to speak, which runs a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery. So they tend to slow down when we're getting up to about 45 minutes. By the hour, they're really probably struggling to get around the track, depending on the strategy of the drivers. Whereas the B and the C-Class use the 16 amp hour battery, which will power a good vehicle for a good hour, so you don't see much in the drop-off in speed. Because of low numbers in both class A and C, we ran them together in the first event. We normally have run B and C together. Uh, class A is for kids up to year 10, so it particularly kind of invites district high schools to come involved, and obviously younger kids at a senior high school. Uh, but then we also ran class C, which is our open class. So we had our sponsors Synergy, They've, for the last few years, had a group of apprentices at the Muja Power Station design and build a car. They were in there. Uh, we had another private entrant who was last year's champion who's tried to set a world record in how far a battery uh, vehicle could go on one charge. Uh, they were in there as well. A group of us grumpy old fart teachers put a car in as well, as well as a couple of ex-students uh, had built cars uh, in their own backyard and put them in. Uh, we ran them together, even though they've got different battery uh, sizes. Uh, simply due to numbers. So we had 10 in that first event, we've got 20 here behind us. Um, and the main difference is Class A has got a small battery, a 36 by 10, B and C have got a 36 by 16, and in Class C there's actually no budget limit, whereas in both the school classes, we sort of cap how much they can spend on the car at 1,200 bucks. So the battery doesn't count in that, and neither does their safety gear, but it's just a matter of um, trying to limit the cost so that we're not turning this into a spending competition. It's really which kids can design and build the best car. Over the years, we've had a number of different materials. Um, Wesley have been very successful in the last three years with aluminium frames, and they use core flute, which is like a plastic cardboard, uh, as the body skin. Um, other times, it's been a simple steel uh, frame with aluminium panels. Uh, a couple of the cars that are out here are all aluminium, so aluminium frame and aluminium skin. Um, and Melville's cars and also one of the Class C cars, uh, not Melville's new car, but their older ones, were built from plywood. So a little bit like a, a wooden boat or a wooden plane. So you get lots of different materials get used um, and obviously lots of different and varied designs. It's built out of aluminium. Probably most of it's made out of aluminium. We designed it on a program called SolidWorks and then changed the design as we went. But yeah, mostly stayed the same. Just out of aluminium, riveted together. The kids that get involved with this um, really get that hands-on application of concepts. They don't just learn in the workshop, but stuff from maths and science, even stuff from art, I guess. They put it all together and are able to actually see a car which is uh, not so complex that a high school kid couldn't design and build one on their own. But at the same time, they get to go out and, you know, the best evaluation you can have is go out and race against other kids who've been given the same brief. Oh, it's been great. Like, we've been here, I think, since about 2 o'clock in the Arvo, but 
we're still having fun now, it's just been a good event. We've got a fantastic network of teachers who can help. Everyone, you know, we're not racing for sheep stations out here, but everyone's trying to get the best result for their kids and what they can learn. But while it still does cost a little bit of money to get involved, we're trying to obviously keep the cost to a level that most schools would be able to compete with. So it's not too expensive, it's great fun, it's very safe, and uh, yeah, it's just good doing it. Well guys, well, what this means is for the first time in four years we have a Class B champion who is not from Wesley College. So a change at the top. A school with a former president of the EB Challenge at the helm, Christchurch Grammar School, CCGS1, took a record for Class B 41 laps. Well done.